Hi and welcome to the Ideal Calibrations How to Calibrate Your Gas Detector series. Today we're going to be looking at the Industrial Scientific Hybrid MX6. Let's get this started while we're going through some of the equipment. To start it, press and hold the middle button until the screen lights up. Once it does, go ahead and release, place it down, and let's go through the rest of our equipment while that goes through startup. First thing you're going to need is a 0.5 liter per minute regulator. Now mine mine looks a little different than yours. Yours will probably have the screwing end down here at the very bottom and the gas usually comes out the top with this on the side. But that's okay. This works just fine. You're going to need to open this regulator up and let's get our cylinder prepped while this is getting started. Well, it looks like it's already started, but that's okay. Go ahead and open this up right here. And now what you're going to do is take your cylinder of calibration gas which is 25 parts per million hydrogen sulfide, 100 parts per million carbon monoxide, 25% LEL pentane. Now we use methane as a simulant gas and feel free to watch our video methane versus pentane calibration for why we do that. It's a safety precaution that we go through here. Also there's 19% oxygen. Now Industrial Scientific recently has switched over to 18% oxygen, um, So, but 19% oxygen works just fine. It's no real difference there. Okay, just make sure those values match and that you haven't changed any values in the system. So, once your regulator is open, go ahead and screw that into the top of the cylinder. The reason that you don't screw it in closed is that way you don't jam room air into your cylinder. Okay, now the gas is flowing, so go ahead and close that. Okay, and you can finish screwing it up. Doesn't need to be too tight, but snug is good. Put that to the side. Now take your tubing. You can use any kind of Teflon line tubing. Industrial Scientific recommends polyurethane, which I agree with. I like polyurethane. Also Viton, but it's a bit more expensive. I'll take this and attach this to your calibration adapter here. If you have a pumped monitor, you won't have a cal adapter. You'll have a demand flow regulator instead, and the hose will go into the input port on the top. Okay, now that's all set. Put that aside for now. Let's take a look at the monitor. So, to light up the screen, press any of the buttons. There you go. And it'll light up. Now we're going to go into calibration mode. Now there's two options. Most monitors you have to zero them first and then calibrate. This one you just go straight into calibration mode and it will zero first. So press the middle button to bring up your menus. Press right once to go to sensor. Press the middle button again. Now go down to calibrate. Make sure you're in clean room air. And now click the middle button and it will say calibrate all sensors, you want to hit yes. Now it will go through the sensor zeroing process. This will take a minute and what it's doing right now is it's telling the monitor that the air you're in right now is okay. It means hey this is clean air, this is safe, and the oxygen level is about 20.9 percent on industrial scientific monitors. So, what you'll see right now is the screen comes up and it says calibrating. So it set all the other sensors to zero. It's now setting the oxygen sensor to 20.9. And you'll see right now it says 32.5. Anything above 20.9 is good. If it starts to get below 20.9, that's when you're going to want to order a new sensor because your sensor is going to go bad soon. Okay, now it looks like we're all good here. Press OK. Now it says apply 25 parts per million H2S. Now what that means is apply the gas overall. It calibrates all four sensors at once. If you have any other sensors in there, like isobutylene, it'll calibrate those next. So now we're going to take our cylinder, go ahead and turn it on, open, and now it's flowing gas. The way Industrial Scientific does their calibrations is it does them one at a time, kind of like some of the old PhD monitors, if you guys remember those. Well, what will happen is it'll wait to see if it detects hydrogen sulfide gas, and if it does, it'll go through and calibrate that sensor. Now, one of the things you can do if you're not calibrating, let's say you don't want to calibrate H2S on this, you could just hit the middle button right now, and you guys can't see that screen. If you just hit the middle button right now, it would skip that and go to the next gas in the list. But we've got H2S in there, so we're just going to wait for this to go through. There it goes. So it's detected the H2S and it's starting to bring the calibration up. I want you to pay a little attention here. If you look at the numbers, Industrial Scientific does something interesting. They give you a span value. 
So now what that span value is, is the maximum that the sensor reading gives it that the computer software will allow it to put out. So currently I have 25 parts per million H2S on there. It's saying it can only do 21.4 currently. Now that's a little low. Uh, it will still calibrate right now and it's going to go up a little bit more as time goes on. But right now is when I should be ordering a new sensor for this unit and we're going to. But that's how you can tell. So anything below your actual value span wise, you definitely want to get on that ordering a new sensor because your sensor's not going to last much longer. And that's going to be the last number, whatever it shows up there. So we're at 24.2, so 24.9, yeah. This one is looking like it could use a new one, but isn't totally urgent. You don't need next day air, you could order it ground from your distributor and be just fine. Let's see if I put this down, if you can still see it. Nice bright light, but it's all sorts of glare on that screen. Now you can also see that it has the other two sensors as pending. Now what that means is once the H2S is calibrated, it will go through and it will calibrate those other two sensors. This gas monitor does definitely take its time under calibration. I know there's a number of other gas monitors out there that calibrate faster, but it's not necessarily a bad thing, except in the usage of calibration gas that you're going to go through. Okay, so H2S is good. Now it's saying apply 100 part per million CO. Now we already have the gas on, so you don't need to do anything. The detector will recognize that you have the calibration gas on. It's going to be in the calibration. Now this should happen a bit faster than the H2S went through. It should calibrate this and realize that your value is stable much sooner. You'll notice there, it went right through. Now it's doing 25% LEL pentane. So we have a pentane simulant that we use. We use methane. Uh, what it is, it's a two to one value. Now Dave over in Industrial Scientific disagrees with me on this, uh, but I, I don't think calibrating with pentane is safe unless you're going to go into a pentane environment. And the reason is, the sensor loses sensitivity to methane first. So I've seen monitors caled with pentane that wouldn't pass calibration with methane. Okay, we're good, pass. So go ahead, turn your gas off. Pop the top and hit OK. Your calibration is officially complete. And what you're going to do is let the screen go down. I do like the alarms on this, how it flashes the screen and flashes the LEDs at you. Industrial Scientific does a great job with their alarms. Okay. Anyway, for all the gases to come down, now I'm going to press the button on the screen to light it up. That way we can see this fall. Okay, we're just waiting for those to come down. And while those are coming down, my name is James Moore. I'm with Ideal Calibrations. And you can give us a call here at 734-956-0539. And we can answer any questions you guys have about the monitor or how to calibrate it. If you have any problems or a sensor is dead or it's not calibrating, just let us know. The email address here is, for me is james at idealcalibrations.com and you can visit our website at www.idealcalibrations.com. Okay. It looks like it's coming down slowly but surely. Man, pressing that button to keep that screen on does get annoying on these videos. I'll tell you that though. That's coming down, and what you're going to want to do is make sure this goes down to zero. Even if it takes a minute or two, that's okay. Just watch it as it goes down and comes back to room air zero. And once it does, you're ready to go. To turn the monitor off, which I'm going to do before this is actually done, but that's okay. It won't harm the monitor. 
is press and hold the middle button. It will say continue with shutdown. You're going to press the middle button for OK. It's going to shut down the monitor and you're good to go. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks you very much. If you have any questions, call or email us or leave a comment. And you guys all have a great day. Keep safe out there.